Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we'll continue on the pure substance analysis, and now we get a bit more complicated. And again, we're talking about the refrigerant 134A, the Freon. So if you don't know what that is, if you want to know more about it, just check the previous video. I'll leave a link to it just here on the corner. All right, so problem statement reads, a uh, 100 kilograms of R134A at 200 kilopascals are contained in a piston cylinder device whose volume is 12.322 meters cubed. The piston is now moved until the volume is one half its original size. This is done such that the pressure of the R134A does not change. Determine the final temperature and the change in total internal energy of the refrigerant. Okay, so we have a different setup as we had last time. Let me try to do draw what we have here. We have we now have a piston, so let's try to draw that piston here. Let's try to do this. And let's put the piston here. And again we have the same refrigerant or 134A here inside. We have a hundred kilograms of it. And we know that in this first instance here, in this first stage, we have 200 kilopascals. Okay, now what we're going to do from state one into state two is that we're going to compress this container by and have the volume, right? So I'm going to put my piston downwards like so, so th such that at the end of it, so if this is my state one, is, and this is my state two. I did, I will compress so that if this is my volume one, my volume two is half that of volume one. Right? Again, every single thermodynamic problem is going to be the same thing. We need to identify the states by finding two properties, two thermodynamic properties. And then once we have that, we can find all the other properties. Okay, so in this case, we know the volume, the original volume, V1, is. 12.322. Problem statement says so. And therefore, this is just going to be half of that, so just 6.16 meters cubed. Okay, so that's one um, property, but that's not a thermodynamic property yet. To, for it to be a thermodynamic property, we need to find a specific one. Luckily, that's very easy because that's just the volume divided by the mass, which we happen to know, and it does not change, right, because there's no mass leaving the system. So that's just 100 divide whatever the volume we have by 100 so that we can have this as a thermodynamic property for both instances. Okay, so this is going to be 0 0.0616 meters cubed per kilogram. There you go. So now we have one property. Now we need a second property to be able to define these states. Well, the second property for state one has been given from the start, and that's very easy for us. So therefore, you know, the second property here is, oops, P1 is 200 kilopascals. And with these two guys here, these, these two, uh, properties combined, I can define all the properties of state one. And then for state two, what do I need to do? Well, for state two, I know that the volume is half, so I can find out what is the um, specific specific volume of that. But I'm going to need to, I'm going to need another set of properties or another property to be able to find out uh, information for the second one, right? So let's read the problem statement again. Um, the piston is now moved into the one half of its original size, so there you know that already. And this is then such that the pressure of the refrigerant does not change. So that means that, right, that statement is saying that the pressure two, let me change color so that this is not confusing, pressure two has to be equal to pressure one. And if that's the case, then that means that pressure two has also to be 200 kilopascals. Okay, so there you go. Oops, not kilograms, kilopascals. So there you go, we have two properties, oops, not these two, these two, two set of properties for state two. So therefore, these two proper, these two states are completely defined, and we can find whatever we want to find for them, right? First, we want to find what's the final temperature, and that means that we're looking for T2, right? So that means that we're looking for what is T2, what is T2? And we want to find the change in internal energy, so that means that we want to find delta U, or, in other words, U2, final state, minus U1, first state. Okay, this is thermodynamic property, so we can find this off the table. This as well, we can find off the table. So what I'm going to do is, because I have the pressure, I'm going to look for the pressure table for the refrigerant. I'm going to go to 200 kilopascals, and I'm going to find a where I sit 
whether it's a saturated mixture, whether it's a uh, compressed fluid or a superheated fluid by using my specific volume. So let's go ahead here. This is the saturated table for temperature. So I'm not interested in that one. I'm looking for the pressure one. So we'll keep going. Temperature table, no good. Pressure table, there you go. And now 200 kilopascals. So 200 kilopascals, this is it. Just here. And I have 0, 0.0, let me just, let me hear as a reminder, 0 0.06 meters cubed per kilogram. And I want to see where that falls. So 0 0.06, that is greater than 0007. And that is smaller than 0 0.09, right? So therefore, right, just like before, so therefore we can conclude, okay, so because, because my specific volume um, of the saturated liquid is smaller than specific volume of state two, which in turn is smaller than the specific volume of the saturated vapor. Okay, in other words, because my 0 0.06 falls between between these two guys, right? So it's between this one and this one, then I can be sure, therefore, I am sure state two is a saturated mixture. Right, so I'm looking at the right table and I can grab properties of this table. What else do I know? Well, if this is the case, I know that the temperature has to be the saturated temperature, right? So that question that I was asking is, what is the temperature at T2? Well, I can tell you for sure, T2 is minus 10.09 degrees Celsius. Boom, done. Okay. However, the other thing I need to extract from this table is the internal energy. And you can see it over here, internal energy. You can see there's one for the saturated liquid, there's one for the saturated vapor. And we know that my, saturate, my internal energy is going to fall between these two values. Why? Because I know it's a mixture, right? If it were saturated liquid, it would be this one here. If it were saturated vapor, it would be this one here. If it were superheated, it would be greater than 224. And if it were compressed, it would be different too. So I'm sure it's going to be somewhere between 38 and 200, oops, and 224. To be able to determine which exactly, what I need to do is find out what is the quality, right? And we discussed quality before. The quality is just a ratio, the quality, call X, is just a ratio of the mass of vapor that I have divided by the mass total, okay? And there are different ways to do it, but whenever we have a set of properties, we can use it to do, to determine that. Why? Because remember that, the specific specific volume of the mixture, two, is just how much of the liquid I have times whatever is not vapor plus how much of the vapor I have in its specific volume, right? In other words, if I have 50-50, then it's going to be 50% of this value here, which is this guy here, and 50% of this one here. If I have, you know, 100% of the vapor, then it's going to be just this value here. If I have 30% of this, it's going to be 30% of this and 70% of this, and so on and so forth, right? So that means that if I want to solve for x, right, I can rewrite this for x, and what I'm going to have is, okay, if I want this to be solved for x, I'm going to have x is just going to be my V2 minus my V liquid divided by my V uh, vapor minus my V liquid. I say divided means minus, right? So I can use this to find my quality. Once I have my quality, I can do the same thing to find my internal energy. So I have everything I need here. Let's just write things down. What is V2? Well, we calculated V2 to be 0 0.06, um, 0 0.0616. What else? We happen to know this guy here, the liquid one, 007532. And then the bottom here, the gas one is 0 0. Uh, 0 0.099951. Oops, too many nine, 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 five, one. Minus the same thing, right? 0 0.0007532. Cool. And then I solve this. They all have the same units. They're all meters cubed per kilogram, so that's going to go away. We're left with the ratio, it's a percentage. And we get this as 0.6133, or same thing, 61.33%. What does that mean? It means that 61% of my mixture is vapor, whilst the remaining approximately 40%, 39%,
is liquid. Okay, why is that useful? Because now I can come here and I can say, all right, so my internal energy is going to be 60% is going to be this guy here, and the 39% is going to be this guy here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to know what's the internal energy of my mixture. All right, so to be able to find internal energy, so green, so internal energy of state 2 will be the internal energy of the vapor, of the vapor, times the ratio of how much I have in vapor, and internal energy of the liquid, saturated liquid, times whatever I have liquid, which is 100% minus the vapor. So this is, um, the vapor one was 224.51, times the 61.33%, or just 0.6133, and the liquid one is 38.26, and this is just going to be 1 minus the 0 0.6133, and this gave me 152.4, 152.4. And that is in kilojoules per kilogram, but we can, if we don't know that, we can check, always check on the table here, and you can be sure of what you're doing. So kilojoules per kilogram it is. Okay, so remember that what we're after is the delta U, right? So we're looking for delta U, so that is the U2 minus U1. And we know U2 already, we're missing U1 to be able to find U1. We need to go to state 1 and use properties for state 1. If you recall, let's go back all the way up there, where are we? State one, we also had two set of properties. We are also at 200 kilo, not kilograms, kilopascals. And, but we do have a different specific volume. So let's have a look. 200, where were we? 200, here we are. 200, and our specific volume for state one is 0.1232. So 0.12, let me get rid of this. I'm just interested in this part here. Note that 0.12 is greater than 0.099, right? So therefore, therefore, I'm sure that my state one, state one is superheated. It's superheated. Okay. Why is that? Because I know my specific volume. Let's put it here. Because the specific volume of state one is greater than the specific volume of the saturated vapor. So therefore I know it's superheated. And that means that I'm not I cannot use this table because this is one this is for saturated and I don't have a saturated mixture. What I do have is a superheated fluid. So I need to go down to the superheated fluid table. Here you go, superheated. And I'm looking for 200 kilopascals, which is the same thing as 0.2 megapascals. And now I'm looking for in this column here, which is giving me a specific volume, I'm looking for the 0.12 0.1232, and I'll note 0.12 is here, 0 0.12, 0 0.12, and 0 0.1232 is this guy, 0.1232, very, very close to this guy. So I'm going to be very happy with this value just here, 0.1232. So 0.1232 points me to an internal energy, U, internal energy, of 263.09. So that's the value I'm going to use for U1. Right, so let's solve this problem, finish it off, by noting that my delta U equals my U2 minus my U1. My delta U is U2, what's U2? U2 is 152.4. My U1 is 263.09. And I'll note that this is... Uh, they're both in kilojoules per kilogram. So in this case, I would I can multiply by 100. I know the mass is 100. Um, you can do that if you want to. Depending on how the problem is worded, they would want you to do that. In this case here, it's not clear. But matter of fact is, this can be one answer, right? So the delta U is negative 110.65 kilojoules per kilogram which means that you know, energy has been received by this gas. And the other thing is if you can do delta two, let's put in uppercase, just to differentiate, we can multiply that by 100, it's gonna give me 110, 65, 
and that's just kilojoules without the kilogram because I'm multiplying by 100. This could also be your answer just here, right? This could also be your answer right here. So we were, we are applying, yeah, we're applying energy to this gas. It's being compressed, and it went from an internal energy of uh, 100 and uh, 263 to an internal energy of 152. Just to conclude this question, what we found is that we're going from a state of um, higher energy to a state of lower energy, right? So we can, if we, you know, if we put energy here on the y-axis, just energy. And we would put, you know, our state number one over here, which is the state at which we have the gas at fifth, what was the temperature again? We can check there again. It's 200 and it's superheated, so our temperature is about 40 degrees Celsius. And for our temperature number two, we know it's negative 10, right? So it decreased in temperature. So our state one is over here and our state two is down here, right? So there's a it's a lower state of energy. We can know that by just looking at the numbers here, which means we're going like so, right? Now, interestingly, if you have a piston, like we did here, and we were to compress this gas, what we would expect is the pressure to increase, right? So we can expect the pressure to increase, and but we didn't allow any pressure change, right? We kept pressure at 200 kilopascals. So what ended up happening is that we have now, from as we go from state one to state two, what we have is exactly half of the volume, right? With the same pressure. For that to be possible, for us to be able to lower that energy, we need to lower the temperature. That's why we have the drop in temperature going from 40 all the way to minus 10. So in other words, what's happening here, right? What's happening here is that the compression, as we go from one to one, the compression also is seeing as the compression is happening in the piston, we're also seeing heat leave the system, right? So we have heat leaving here, and that's the reason why at the end of the day, we um, lost, we put lost in quotes because we can't necessarily create energy, but the system lost the 110 kilojoules per kilogram, or the 110,000 kilojoules, right? So that's where, that's the conclusion that we have from this problem. Hey, I hope this helps you out. If you did, consider leaving a like this video. If you have any questions, just leave them down below in the comment section, and we'll talk soon.